Hey, hi, witches. witches. Tonight's meetup is about creating a grimoire. A grimoire is a magical reference book. So as you're learning things, it's really helpful to put it all in one place so it's easy to get back to. You don't have to search back through five different books. Tonight, we're giving you ideas of different pages that you can have in it and how to structure it when you're just starting out. Hope you enjoy. Tonight, I really am going to turn over a lot of time to you guys to ask questions because this is a huge topic and I could talk about it a lot, but that doesn't mean that your questions would get answered. So we are going to go through things probably in about 20, 25 minutes and we should be done. And then the floor is going to be open for questions. So if you want to write them in the chat, we'll go through the chat questions. But if you want to um, come onto the screen and ask your question, that's OK, too, because we will stop recording at the end of the lesson. Um, yes, so if this is your first time here, that's sort of what we do. We try to record the lesson all the way through and then we end the recording that goes on YouTube and we all talk about what everyone's interested in as far as questions of this topic or another topic, it'll be an open floor. So we are at 6.04. So I'm just gonna do a few hellos. Ooh, fancy, I don't know, Amy, fancy, okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, Devin's coming from Chicago. Hello. Welcome back, Kat. Thank you, Maggie. I missed you guys last week. <laughs> I was in Lynn, no, Richmond, Indiana. Wooey, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> At least she wasn't freezing cold. We were worried that it she wasn't might freeze. bad. It really wasn't bad. I didn't even take a big coat. Uh, so I'm glad you know, it wasn't too bad. I'm really glad to be here. I missed you guys last week. Um, I did get back and get to work and get the recording up though. I don't know if anybody saw it. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's looked at last week's recording, but it's there. So, yeah. okay. Well, it is 6.05 and we will jump into the topic tonight of creating a grimoire. So as you guys know, nerdy me, I want you to know where the term grimoire comes from. So it's a French word that actually means grammar or old Latin writings. So grammar and grimoire, grammar is English, grimoire is French. Uh, and they started using grimoire, the term for magical writings in about the 1800s because people stopped writing in Latin and the only things that were kept in Latin were things people didn't want other people to be able to read. That goes back to the whole secret society, holding knowledge for power. So do you have to call your book of references a grimoire? You do not. If you feel connected to it, you can. I do just because I differentiate that between my book of shadows and this. But most of the time I end up combining them as I write. I always tell myself I'll do one reference book and one real shadow book, but I, don't, I just write it all out at the same time. So I keep it in one place. It makes it easier. All right. Um, so what is a grimoire? In case I didn't make that clear, it is a reference book for magic. That's all it's really meant to be. When people use that term, you're looking at lists of um, I'm losing the word, lists of correspondences. Correspondences, Whew, yes. That was hard yes. to get out. Correspondences, um, things that you attach meaning to with something else. So it can also be not things that you learn in a book, but you just feel like, you know, if you had a family member pass and you started to see cardinals a lot after that, for you, cardinals could be in your book of reference as when people pass, I see cardinals. So you can make your own connections as well. It doesn't have to be stuff that was already written previously. Um, grimoire should be unique to your learning and what your path is. No two grimoires are probably going to be the same because each of us takes a path and learns about things at different times. I, in my beginning of my journey, I was obsessed with psychic mediumship, intuition, palmistry, and numerology. Like, that was my life for five years. I didn't really get into too many spells or color coordinations or anything like that. So my reference book originally was all that. And I just fed on it all the time. Uh, in my later years now, because I have a lot of people asking me for help, I'm, I'm really into the associations and the spells and knowing what everything means as far as the natural world. So that's how my books have evolved. And in case I don't mention this later, are you only ever gonna have one grimoire? No, <laughs> I hope not. You will probably switch it out every year to two years. If you're not practicing a lot, it might be every five years. I've had maybe 10, 10 different books that um, I've used as my grimoire. Uh, like I said, I also have combined it with, as my book of shadows. So there's a lot of my personal writings in there. Um, 
So I filled them up very quickly. You know, the notebooks are only 190 pages. You can burn through that pretty quick if you're doing uh, journaling and tarot reading and putting it in there and stuff. So, okay. Is there a way to retire your grimoire? Because I didn't put this in the note cards and I'm just thinking of it. If you're ready to retire a grimoire that you started and say you're not happy with it or it's old and outdated and you like, what do you do with it? You can absolutely burn it. You can send it back to the earth by burying it, ripping it up in little pieces, distributing it into the water of some body of water. Um, any way that you would normally cleanse or release other magical tools, you can do that with your grimoire as well if you want to just like let it go. If it doesn't serve you anymore, you, you've moved on to another stage. Keeping them around is fun, especially if you've journaled in them. You can go back and look at stuff that you did and realize how much you've grown. That's always super exciting. Um, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Kat doesn't know how to drink tea. It's okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> okay, so that's really about getting some ideas out of the way with grimoires. Um, the next most helpful thing is about how do you design your grimoire? How are you bringing all this information together from you know all the books or internet posts that you've read and putting it in order? And I'll tell you, if you're brand new to a grimoire, the easiest way to do it is honestly print things out, put it in a three ring binder where it's all loose and start organizing it that way. Get that started for maybe six months, like collect all the stuff that you like or you're interested in, and then see what flows for you as you reference it. Because really what it is, it's meant to be the, an easily accessible reference book to you. So if you are really into numerology, maybe that's all the stuff that goes in the beginning because that's what you're constantly going back to because you're doing people's numbers or you're looking into family members or something like that. You know, if it's astrology, all the beginning of your grimoire would be your astrology stuff. So I would say that the loose leaf form is easiest at first because you can print stuff off, you can photocopy it, even out of books. Like I've photocopied charts out of books. As long as I don't post them anywhere online, I'm not infringing on copyright material. So you can copy stuff from books and then you start organizing it how, it, how it's best for you. So the three ring binder is the first way I would tell everybody to go if it's your very first book. Um, the second way would be to get something that has tear out pages. So if you're like me or Kat, the moment that we screw up a letter or a word, we can't cross it out. The whole page has to go now. <laughs> like, I can't see that mistake. That, that's the old me. Now I use stickers and I put a sticker over it. So that's how I got, <laughs> that's how I got away with that. Um, and speaking about things that can go in your grimoire, I've cut out pictures from magazines. I've, you know, I've cut out like photocopy images that I wanted in there. Um, you know, I've drawn stuff in mine. I definitely do stickers. I love stickers. I love seeing other people's artwork. So you can use all of that in your, on your pages as you're putting your stuff together. You can get as creative as you want when you're putting your information in and what is really attractive to you. Like it should feel like yours. If you want one that looks like it's off of that show, um, Charmed, if you want the old book with the stained, tea stained paper and all of that, you can absolutely create that, but I would say put your book together first and then start transferring it all into something that's more permanent. Um, so that would be the next thing, right? A fixed book where you, you can't tear out pages, or if you do, you'll know they're torn out. That's something else I can't do. <laughs> if, it, if you're going to be able to see that the page is torn out, I'm not going to be able to handle it. Um, so once you really get an idea of how you want your information organized that's the most useful to you, including using tabs, you guys. I use washi tape. <laughs> I fold washi tape in half and make tabs on the outside of my reference pages, especially when it's something I keep having to go back to. So I remember that, you know, my blue washi tape is the water element and all the stuff that I do with that or whatever. So you make it meaningful for you. That's why I say no two grimoires should be the same because it should all just be about your personality and adding in your own little touches to it. So that's like, type of books, how to start organizing your information. And again, if you don't know what you would wanna do first, just gather everything up and then start sorting it. And the three ring binder lets you change it around so much that eventually you'll come to a place where you're like, all right, I never really use the color coordination or how the days of the week relate to the planets. That's something I don't really use. So that's not gonna be in my grammar at all. Other people might feel very connected to 
you need to know that on Monday from noon to one is Mercury's hour, which I don't know if that's true. Don't write that down. But if that's an example of information that I may know or somebody else may know that you don't need. You're like, I don't really see how that's going to pertain to me later. I'm not at that place. Um, okay. So a couple ideas on, I gave you some on like how to organize it or what should go first, but if you are still like searching for something, I would do it by topic that you're working on goes first in your book. So whatever, if you're gonna start, if you're brave, I'm gonna use the word brave, and you're gonna use a book that has pages that you can't really like rip out or they'll know, or you'll know, there's no day, but something that comes like in a bound form, and you're just gonna start writing it, start with the topic that you're most interested in right now and write everything that you can about that topic. Find a way to end it. You can either crease a page over, you can add the washi tape like I did, you can do sticky tabs, and then you would start your new section for whatever the next thing is that you're like, I, okay, I've learned everything about astrology or tarot. I wanna move on to my next topic. That's how you would just start a new section in your book. Or maybe leave some blank pages so that you could come back and add stuff. Add, add pages as you gather more information. That's yeah. What, that's what I would do because I would already know that there's no <laughs> way that everything that I found everything, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to say this is an end point. Is it ever an end point? No, well, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. go through multiple books throughout your journey because you you keep getting into new stuff or learning new things. And your book is a reference book. So imagine that five, 10 years in you know all the color coordinations or you know those first 10 stones that you wrote about. You don't really need them in the book. Now you're learning 10 new stones or a new set of colors or then you've got the chakra system and how that relates to stuff. So as you add in information and you've remembered other stuff through your practice, those pages can be eliminated. You know, I've seen the people with, they want to build books like this big, but half the information they don't use anymore because that's like, they have all of their phases when they were a new witch, it's, it's in memory now. Yeah, because they've been practicing. So it's very helpful to use your book as you build it for practice so that as you grow with it, you can eliminate pages from it and start a new one. Isn't it always fun to buy a brand new journal or book? I'm addicted to that. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see a notebook, I'm like, oh, look, I could write in that. I could use that for something. Oh, yeah. I could write things down. I love notebooks. And I love to grab them when they're on sale and they speak to me because I'm like, one day <laughs> I will use this pretty teal yeah. and purple book. I definitely have blank ones that are sitting around waiting to be used eventually um, because I also like to buy stuff either when it's like BOGO or on clearance or, you know, whatever. Uh, if there's one that I just absolutely have to have, I buy it and then wait for a really special purpose for it. Sometimes that'll hinder you though. You're like, oh, it's so perfect. I don't want to mess that up. That's me, perfectionist. Don't, I don't even start it. I'm like, I'm just going to look at it and admire it. <laughs> okay, so this is, the, this is the really mundane part of it. These are all pages that you can have in your grimoire and things that you can research or talk about. And I'm going to try to go through this list. It's like three, three of these index cards um, and we'll try to add some stuff into it. But each... Each topic could be a page or several pages, and that's just up to you and how in depth you want to get with it. But again, these are all references to do spells or rituals or grow yourself and your skill of like, you know, if it is astrology or numerology, um, palmistry, whatever you want to get into. So these are the ideas, and I'm going to go slow. So then <laughs> if you want to make some notes, you can. If not, you can come back. Are you going to post those, though, after? I, yeah, I thought about that. If anybody feels like I should, type it in the comments. Um, I already think that I should, but I need to rewrite them. because She thinks she has to rewrite them. I don't think They're so. Messy. You guys will be able to figure <laughs> it out. You know her well enough. I used a gel pen that blends all the letters together it's a lot. Okay. So. Okay, so these are the reference pages or resource pages or charts that you can make within the grimoire that should that can help you. So pick and choose at will. The first one I put down is elements. Knowing your elements is probably one of the best things to get into contact with like the energies around you and yourself, knowing what your sign is. So the directions. A lot of people go straight into casting and knowing the directions is helpful for if you want to face a certain direction. 
<laughs> I have a question. Can you just make sure we all understand what you mean when you say elements? Elements, fire, water, earth, air. Oh, okay. Spirit, and which direction those are, north, east, and oh, no. right? No, you don't even do no, that. No, I don't. Well, I don't use directions for myself, you guys. I always point west because that's where the water is for me. And so since that's my sign, when I do my spells and rituals, I'm usually at the beach and I'm always facing the water. So <laughs> I face west. That's just what I do. So, and you guys can do the same thing where you have a spot that feels sacred to you that you always go back to and maybe you turn to the same tree or, you know, it's in this room in your house that you do your stuff. It's the same wall. Find out what that direction is and why you do it that way, you know? And if it, if the direction um, relates to something that you feel deeply about, it's like, oh, my subconscious knew this, you know, something pulled me to that direction to face that way. For me, it's water. So the directions, knowing the directions and what they stand for. Colors are huge. Um, we use colors in feeling out energies. It can go along with chakras. So you can add chakras with the colors or you can just do colors for candles, for clothing, um, for drawing symbols. That next one would be symbols if you wanna use the elemental symbols, you know, all the triangles or knowing what the pentagram means and using that appropriately. Um, so, the big pages that are going to be more than one page, herbs and stones are huge. Tackle those 10 at a time or do what you have now. Like whatever stones you have now, learn all about those. Do a ritual or a spell with each one of those and really get that feeling for them. Don't go buy more or don't try to learn about stones that you don't have. That's It's way too hard to remember things that you don't even get to hold or feel or see. Um for herbs, if you grow anything or stuff that you can get at your local grocery store or at, you know, a metaphysical store that's dried, use it and then make a note in your grimoire about it. So if you're, if you're thinking that you want to just like find out every herb, I have an example of that. This is my herb book. It's the encyclopedia. So that tells you how much information's in there. I'm not putting all this in my grimoire. There's a ton of plants that don't grow in my area that I will never use. So I picked out the ones that I use a lot that I can grow myself. So that's what I suggest you do with that to keep it small. Learning the plants and trees around you is really good. Um, you can put in there incense, trees. If you like the Celtic um, culture, they have the Celtic tree months. So that's really cool. Again, those trees don't grow in Florida where I'm at, but they do grow in Northern colder places. So I only have like three of those trees. <laughs> So as much as I love the information, it's not useful for me because I live in Florida. So, um, and then moon waters, different moon waters associated with different phases. You can have a page for that. The next one I put in is more about the mental side of it. So these are all physical elements that you can like bring into your uh, space for spells and rituals, but meditating, anything you find out about meditating and what works for you or a, a certain website that you go to that you can find good meditations on. Grounding, the same thing. What visualizations work for you and what are you trying to work on or what are you focusing to see and bring into your life for manifestation? And then it's how to charge things with your intention. So those, all those things that I mentioned before build to charging things with your, with your intention. So getting your stone or your herb, meditating on it, feeling the energy in it, and then imbibing it. Um, Another big one that people don't usually put in their books, but I think it's always good to remember is an ethics for you. My only ethic is do no harm to you or anyone else, like yourself or anyone else. That's really my only ethic. Uh, treating Mother Earth better than you know anybody else could treat her. I hold that to the highest and then animals for me. But writing your own code of ethics for you as a witch or as a practicing magical person, it's good to have that solidified in your head to know what boundaries you're going to or pushing and what you're not going to go past. Next would be tools. Okay. I, I am one of those people that I don't use all the tools listed in the books of like the athemi and a carving knife and all the other things. I use things that are around me. I, you know, I've used scissors to carve things into um, my candles before. So I don't, I don't pick up specific items to have them available for that, but you can. So the tools are 
looking into your altars and what you want to put on them, but it would be the athemi, which is the double-edged blade that is just for um, like a wand or an air element. Um, you can have your book of shadows and tools on that. It, it, this wouldn't contain your whole book of shadows. Your broom, there's lots of brooms. You have the hand dusting broom, feather type, actual floor broom, candles, cauldron, the chalice. Say that with me. Chalice. I think it should be chalice, but the chalice. They also say corset. My girls say corset. And I'm like, it's corset. Corset. And, <laughs> and I say orange and crown. So that was my public education. And that's just how I say it. Thanks, Mom. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, I didn't send you to private school. No, I'm not. No. God, we, oh, all right. And then a mortar and pestle. So if you do have dried herbs, that's always helpful to break things up. Um, I do it with my hand. I have one. I don't ever use it. It's pretty. It's made of granite. I love it. But in the moment, I don't take it with me to my skull. So I always just use my fingers to crumble stuff up. I really want one of those. And every <laughs> time I find one at like TJ Maxx, so I'm good. Somebody took the... Oh, the, the thing, it. and it's just the bowl, and I'm like, well, <laughs> what am I supposed to do with that? Um, oh, goodness. Okay, and then wands. Right. So if you wanted to do a page on wands and what wands work for you or what you would like to have from a wand. And then another really big topic moving on is deity. So who are you working with in your magic? You know, we've got all the deities. We did a um, the 12 ancient moon goddesses. So that's just 12 of hundreds <laughs> that you could work with. But it can also be spirits that you're attached, that not may, attached maybe sounds wrong, spirits that you feel in line with, um, which can include like famous dead people. I know people who really love Lucille Ball and feel like she's one of their like guardian angel types. But so whoever you feel like you vibe with for spirits, your spirit guides. So people that are over there helping you for your path, ancestors, guardian angels, um, so deities that you work with can be a page. And remember, you don't have to write all of them down, but whoever you feel like you're drawn to, learn about one at a time or three maybe and know what they do, but there's a lot of them. So just pick a couple. Like I said, with each of these topics that are really big, pick 10 and do a page on that. And then if you use them, awesome. And if you don't, eliminate it. For divination tools, of course, tarot. Like I can't get enough of tarot. I probably could have one whole reference book on that. But teas and herbs, so this is for getting more in touch as you drink different teas or have herbs around you for burning. And then runes, uh, crystal spheres, which of course people will say crystal balls, but it could just be a sphere. It doesn't have to be a, like a crystal ball made of quartz. Um, fires and pendulums. So that is all about scrying and being able to see images through looking into something else. So that's all divination tools that you could have a page on. This is the one I was talking about earlier that doesn't, I've never used. The time of the day or the time of the week that references to all these other things. I mean, there's zodiac signs, there's planets that it references to, there's, you know, the hours in between that they consider a witching hour versus not. Um, that could all be a page for you if you were looking at timing out your spells or your rituals just right. Lunar phases is also a thing. I, that's probably closer to my heart. I love watching the moon rise and set as much as I can. And then planetary hours. If you guys have the date book, the witch's date book, this is one of the easiest reference books that you can get. It's only like 12 or $13. They have that in there. So you would, you could pull it straight from this and still use this as your calendar, but it'll tell you about that. How there's like hours associated with different planets. Okay. Next is going to get into the bigger topics of practicing all year long. So these aren't just pages of reference. This is like what comes next for me in the wheel of the year or understanding my dreams as I'm having them. So the holidays is one thing to get back in tune with what the earth is going through and how your, your life and your cycle of being can um, relate to the earth going into cycles of you know winter, spring, summer, fall. So the eight holidays or the wheel of the year, that can be a whole page or each one can have its own page. Definitely understanding dreams and trying to invoke prophetic dreams, like getting messages through your dreams. Write down the things that you see over and over again. Like what's something that you have dreamt about a lot, like as a symbol or 
a creature or something. I can't think of it. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> bugs for me, bugs. Uh -huh. I've always dreamt about bugs, spiders, spider webs, like, and I'm not always scared of them. Mm -hmm. It's not always a bad thing, but I know that when I dream about that, I feel like I'm stuck or I'm small. So bugs for me, when I'm dreaming about that, I'm like, oh, okay, let's look into my life and see. I'm dreaming about the spider webs and the spiders around me. That's like being stuck in something. Or if it's a lot of little bugs, it's like, okay, I feel little in my big world. Like how, what am I doing to make myself feel small or unheard? So since I've been writing down my dreams for forever, I don't know. Yeah, forever. I can remember dreams from when I was like 10, 12, 13. And just knowing what they mean now, it's like, wow, it's, it's an insight into what I'm dealing with in my daily life. Palmistry, if you can find out stuff on palmistry just for yourself, not that you have to read other people, palmistry is a really interesting uh, craft of like, you won't stop being able to look at people's hands when they're serving you or you're out at a bar or there's like a bartender or there are people next to you. You can tell just by shapes of fingers, by fingernails and how they look that sort of the personality of the people. So that, what it helps with is if you have an energy feeling when you're next to somebody and then you look at their hands and it confirms that, you know, they're a negative person or they feel kind of like a dark cloud, you can see that in their fingernails and be like, I am right. Okay, I do need to sort of stay away. So it's just another way to interpret your surroundings. Knowing the planets is always awesome. If you can do your birth chart and really understand where the planets fall for you, that give that like a month. There's a lot to go into that as far as understanding your birth chart, um, your natal chart. So I think the website we always mention that's free is uh, Cafe Astrology, right? Yes. Yeah. And they give you your whole birth chart for free. Um, if you don't know the time that you were born, that's okay. They'll assume a certain time of the day for you, I guess. But because my husband doesn't know what time he was born and I've done his chart and everything works out well for him. But um, I've told people in the past, if you don't feel like some of the things match with you, try the day before or the day after to see if the planet's more aligned to where they were in that same spot during that same time frame. All right. So yeah, that's the other like big thing, right? Astrology and Zodiacs. Oh my gosh, I'm still learning. One of the first books my mom ever introduced me to, which she didn't even know she was a witch way back when, <laughs> but she had this book called Birth, Birth Signs and Sun Signs or something like that. And it talked about uh, how compatible people are. It had like this whole chart in the back of how compatible people are under certain signs and like when they're born. And looking back on all my failed relationships, that book's pretty accurate. I mean, and then my a match that I'm with my husband now, it's like it shows that the number quality there is pretty good. And it's using like Chinese astrology or something like a Chinese method of figuring that out. But just knowing things like that for you, having those tools available, or like now you can navigate your world when you meet somebody and understand things better or like why stuff didn't work out. Yeah. Astrology and the big book, the big book of birthdays too. The big book of birthdays. Is that what it's called? I think so. Because it, it, it gives you a page for, for every, every day, day of the year, of year. Yeah. and sort of like a rundown of yeah, the whole two pages personality and, thing. Uh, yeah. A whole two pages about every day that someone born. Yeah. The secret that, language of birthdays. Sorry. The secret language of no, that's okay. Um, I think I might have that one too in an older version because I love to buy from Goodwill and buy used books. That's what it is. Whoever said the secret language Sandra. of birthdays. Yeah. yeah. Oh my it. gosh. That book's been different versions of it have been in our family since I was really young. Uh, but so imagine that's a huge textbook, right? You're going to take it and use it for you first. And then I have this on a card later, but learning about yourself first learning about your close family members, like people that you interact with all the time or your children. Oh my gosh, your children. This might've been the one she was talking about. Sex signs, you know, matching up your <laughs> loved ones. I don't know. That's an older one. Yeah, I have one. Yeah. I think I Linda, mean, Linda Goodman. I got excited at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay, so that's, there's a lot of information, but what I was going to say is learn about yourself first, the people really close to you, and then people that you work with, or you can expand from there. You can go out from there. But again, your, your grimoire should be tools for you to use that help you navigate the world. So it's fun learning about everybody else too, but that's like, you can give them that information and then move on. 
and then focus back on your craft and what you're doing. Um, yeah, so that was the birth charts and stuff. The moons of the year, if you guys are like us and we love the moon so much, um, you can look up the, you can learn the different names of the, of the moon for the year. Wow, I, I think I said that messed up. There's 13 moons in the year normally, and you can find the names for all of them. There's European names for them. There's Native American names for them. And then there's, you know, today's names for them. Pick the name that you like, none are wrong. They've all been called something by different places in the world, depending on what's going on. So the strawberry moon, obviously, was because strawberry season. The sturgeon moon is because the sturgeons are moving along. Um, so the moons of the year can be a whole thing for you so that you know how to honor that moon or honor that season of the moon. And then lastly is numerology, which is something that I've been obsessed with forever. Every time my sister meets somebody, she's like, what's their numerology? What, tell me about them. What's going on with them? What's their number? <laughs> now I get, now I get pictures of hands. All right. Tell me about this person. It's like just a palm photo. I don't, I don't get pictures of things that are, you know, oh, here, look, I found something cool. Nope. People's hands. Tell me about this. Okay. So that was, that was that. The last page, the last card for us is going to be about spells and rituals. So you guys can imagine how insanely big this topic is. There's hundreds of book, books written on different rituals and spells of all kinds. I write my own spells. I do it intuitively because I do it with the things that I have based on the knowledge that I have. And then I just create it myself. Um, but the different types of spells getting a spell together for yourself for each of the different types or the areas is really helpful and it is okay to keep practicing that same spell over and over and over again there's nothing wrong with that and the length of time that you wait between doing the rituals or the spells is totally up to you and how you're feeling sometimes the first time you do a spell you're very very nervous and by the time it's over you're like oh i learned a lot but i feel like i probably should do that again because I was reading or thinking a lot or it didn't, I didn't stay in the flow with it or whatever it is. So doing a spell a couple of times is totally fine or doing the same spell every year is fine. So if you find one that you really like, continue to do that over and over again. It just gets stronger because you remember it more and it becomes more personal for you. So I encourage you to look into these spells. Cleansing, that's yourself, that's your tools, your space, your house your car, your clothes, <laughs> you know, I have, I have a spell right now in my shampoo and conditioner. My mom doesn't know this. I had to cut all my hair off because I did a protein treatment and burn the crap out of it. So I had this huge bald spot in the back of where all my hair fell off and it just crushed me, right? My hair is like, I'm like Shakira. My hair is my power. You okay? <laughs> I'm so hot. <laughs> it's really warm in here tonight. Sorry. <laughs> So I actually put a spell on my shampoo and conditioner. So every time that I use it, I'm like, you know, long, thick hair. Like I just, I want my hair back. And so I do that every single day. And with my body wash for protection, I know, I don't think I've ever told you this, but for my body wash for protection, I use one of those um, washcloths that are sort of like, I don't a know. Scrubby thing. It's like a scrubby material. You know, it's not like cloth. When I squeeze my body wash onto it, I draw a pentagram on there every time. Sometimes it's not pretty. Sometimes I really mess it up, but my purpose is to put the pentagram on there. And since that's a symbol of protection, that's what I wash my body with. And I imagine just all of this little protection going all over me. So that's a ritual that I do every time I shower or every time I wash my hair, I wash my body more than I wash my hair. So it's like just reiterating for myself that I'm protected, surrounded by light. And I do that without lighting spells, calling corners or, you know, what did, I, did I say lighting spells? Light <laughs> candles. <laughs> I don't light candles or call corners. It's just something that I do for myself. So those are things that you can incorporate into your everyday life as far as things you're trying to help yourself with or your body or, you know, if you also had to cut all your hair off. <laughs> it's it's still, growing back. It I looks know, so good it though. Does, it's it getting all thick and everything. Oh, it man. looks really good. It looks nice. It's working. Um, okay. So it was cleansing, that was way off from cleansing, but, and then charging things. So charging is any time that you're getting an item. It could be one of your magical tools. It could be um, stones, herbs, like whatever you wanna charge. Charging is putting your intention into something or having the elements put 
an intention into something. That's why we leave water out for the moon. You can do sun water. Um, those are also ways to cleanse stuff, but it's the act in which you do it and what you're telling the item that you want from it, what you're putting inside of it with your thoughts. So anything charging, because then you can use it later for your spells or your to keep it in your house to create a vibration. Um, and then there's circle casting. So this is part of spell work and ritual work if you want to do that. There's lots of ways to cast with drawing. You can use your wand to draw a circle. You can imagine the light making a circle around you. You can use stones and step in the circle. Whatever you feel is yours. If you wanna do circle casting, that's something that you should reference in your, in your grimoire and then you practice that same thing that you've decided on over and over and over again. So it's always your reference page for, this is how I cast right now in my practice. You can always change it. You can add to it. You can take it completely away if you want, but that would be a page. All right, candle magic is fire magic, or it's dressing your candles for your spells, for your environment, setting an intention for them. And when you burn them, that's what it means that thing is live and going. Uh, candle spells can also be where you set an intention and let the candle burn all the way down. That's another type of spell, but this is more like, this is how I put together my protection candles, you know, and you write a page for that, or this is how I do my, I'm always about protection. So love, I mean, I've done not love really, but self-love, self-love candles you can put in there and just, you just keep performing that same thing over and over again and watching it work and getting better at it. So candle magic, creating sigils. I don't get to see Trent like ever anymore. I don't know if he even comes to the meetings, but we had a good witch named Trent who was really big into sigils and actually taught us about it. And since then I've been learning more and more about sigils and I use them at certain times, but you can do sigils with your finger, with a wand, you can put it on candles, you can put it on a book for protection. But sigils is another thing where you can have a page about it and it could be your sigil you create, it could be your name, family member's name, but that would be something as a reference. Amulets and talismans. So as an amulet, this is um, a remembrance necklace. These are my dad's ashes in here. He died in 2011. And this is, when I wear this, it's my talisman to bring him with me where I go also for protection. And he came to me right after he passed, but the message was for my sister. So I'm still kind of waiting on my message. I guess he thinks I'm okay. He just sends the birds. Um, so that would be something that is meaningful for you, that has purpose, that when you put it on or wear it, it could be a charmed ring, it could be earrings, it could be whatever you put on your person, it could be a satchel bag of herbs, but that would be amulets and talismans. And you can create those. You can create them, yeah. To yeah. whatever your situation is, like, um, you know, protection when you're driving in your car, because mm -hmm. there's, like, if you live in Florida, <laughs> car accidents are a huge thing here, so you really, yeah. you kind of need that, you know, you need that talisman, so, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. charms. So, a charm is sort of the same thing, it's, it's in the family of a talisman or an amulet, because you can, you can charm something where you give it a purpose, which is the same thing as setting your intention in it, because then you're going to use it for different things, or you can have a charm that you carry and it means the same thing as a talisman or amulet. But I added that because the three get used or um, misinterpreted sometimes, but they really all mean about the same thing. You're just putting your intention into an item and when you carry it or wear it or place it somewhere, that's what you're bringing into the space, the vibrational magic of whatever you put into it. That was long. All right, yeah, it's 6.42. It, went, it was a lot longer than I thought it would be. I thought I was going to do that. So I, can I add one more thing? And no. other people might have no. things if they want it. No. No? Okay. <laughs> so I don't know how many people ever go to Instagram or Pinterest oh, no. or on Facebook, right? But I oftentimes, I follow a bunch of different witches groups, which is witches and groups and things like that on social media. And a lot of times I see spells or correspondences or something like that they'll make a little graphic yeah. at school so yeah i take that like when i find something that i like i actually put it in my and this is i didn't it's really call it a grimoire book. this is this is the book i started it's almost done but um yeah so i put it in here and i like to draw with it so this is about lily magic i saw that i was like wow that's really cool i mean it has all these cool properties 
and I can grow, I happen to be able to grow those here in my garden in Florida pretty much anytime I want. Sorry if anybody's not in Florida and you can't do that. <laughs> they can do but it I think, the year. But you know, I, for me, because I don't write my own spells, I don't know who everybody, what everybody else does, but when I find spells that I like, I think I might use, I write those down. Yeah. I've, um, a lot of my learning, uh, because I'm so new to this, like less than three years, has come from reading books. And then of course, being in this class and, and being around my daughters who, who do uh, witchcraft a lot. But so a lot of my learning is books and I will come across things in books, correspondence tables, and just, you know, the color corresponds, all this stuff. And I, that's what has made up my book so far. Um, I haven't really put it into use much of it yet because I feel like I'm gathering so that I can learn. And at some point in time, I'll actually start acting. You'll start practicing. <laughs> I'll start practice. I'll yeah. practice. It's I feel like I, I practice every day in my mind, but I don't like have the need to do spells and things like that yet. So although that's not really true. That Well, that brings up a really good point. Do you need a grimoire? No, no, you really don't. I brought a stack of books, what is it, like eight, that I reference and look at for things all the time because I'm just curious. But one of the things I wanted to show you guys is, okay, say you don't have a grimoire and you don't really think you need one, that's okay. You wanna go do a spell and you've got this ingredient list or you're building one. I guess the grimoire is really helpful for when you're building your own stuff so that you can learn the correspondences and what it means. But, you know, so first I would go to my herb book and be like, oh, okay, I want to look up, you know, an herb for love. And so I find an herb for love. Okay, so now I want to go to my stone book. I need a stone for love. All right, well, here's stones for love, but which ones do I actually have? All right, we've done that. Now we're in the in bulk season. Okay, what's a good time to do this spell now? We're looking at dates and what the moon is doing. All right, we're going to put that one down. Now we're looking at what kind of magic is the love spell? Well, does it relate to fire, water, earth, air, spirit? You know, what am I, what am I trying to bring with it as a symbol? Put that one down. Now I might go reference a witch's spell book that somebody else wrote, the spell book for new witches, which I think this one's pretty cool. I like this one, uh, lots of ideas in it. So then I find her stuff and I start looking, I'm like, oh, okay, here's ideas. Oh, this is something she might say. Um, I don't like to say too much. I don't like trying to remember it. So I get that idea. Then I might go to, you know, the next one is like, oh, okay, well, what does she say about this love spell thing? So that's, you can get all into all those books. How many books was that? Just, that was six. <laughs> so that's me taking things out of those books and putting them in here. Cause I've not read those books exactly, but that, that's where you can see the value of having a singular the place yeah. where, you, where as you come across information, you, you start recording it in a grimoire, a notebook, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So Kat got to show you hers. I did tell you guys I'd bring examples. This is my one from last year and it's full of pages of, this is my book of shadows with my, um, with my grimoire and stuff that I've done. So like this one is a full moon one. I gotta try to get close, but I've got the stickers in there and washi tape. And then I just like write about things and what I wanna do. Then the next pages are like, what happened? How I felt. So oh, you have to show that. This is fun. I just love all her decorations. So <laughs> well, I she's draw. very, she draws and puts little sticky things on. And I'm like, it's just so colorful it's, and yeah, and fun. I'm like, it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely my personality. So this would be my page for earth and how I feel about the earth element this year. Um, you know, I just put a bunch of stickers in there that relate with earth for me and write down the things that I want to associate with for me. You know, I didn't get that necessarily out of a book. It's like the tarot, you know, in learning the tarot and really knowing that these cards and what they represent, I put some of that in there. And then like my daily drawings, here's the page where I had COVID. <laughs> It just says sick with a bunch of black dots in it. <laughs> so that's why it's part of my book of shadows because it's like journal, book of shadows, reference book for stuff. You know, here's my fire page. And I just, now, now here's my new book for this year. It's not anything yet. And I just, I hated the front of this. Oh, this is all they had at Walmart. So I got it and I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to throw stickers on it to make it mine. But I do this because if I don't, I won't write things down. I won't do it if I don't get a book, even if I don't like the book. Just having it there allows me to write things down. 
So, cause I didn't like the outside. My first page is just like a bunch of squigglies and a rainbow because this is what I like. That's what I wish it looked like. Um, my first, first reference book was one of these composition books. You know, you can tear pages out of them, but it's ugly lined pages. So that's really easy to write in. Um, this is one, this was a gift from somebody that I wrote in a little bit and then stopped because when I messed up, it frustrated me. <laughs> but I've had this book for like 13 years and it still has three pages filled out in it. And then like Michael's does their little um, notebooks and stuff on sale. This is just one that I got on sale at Michael's that's blank and I can write in it anytime, but it's got more of the traditional look of like, you know, gold pages, blank, whatever. What I learned for myself is these are tiny compared to writing in one that's like a bigger size. So size does matter on how much information you want to put on a page and find what you're comfortable with with that. And size matters also because you don't want like a massive book, like an encyclopedia yeah. that you have to drag around with you. So better to, I think. Yeah, because like, I unless you like that sort of thing. Well, I take mine with me when I go out to the water and I'm already carrying like candles and lighter in my book and my tarot cards and like all my other stuff. I don't need a 50 pound book in my bag. I just need like my one book that I have. And what I'll do if I have to make references, I put everything in my, in my grimoire first before I go out and do my spell. And then I'm like, all right, then I get in my space once I've traveled to where I'm going. And that's how I use it without bringing six books with me <laughs> to remember why I'm doing this or what I'm looking up. Um, okay. I think that's it, right? It's 649. <laughs> and I want to open the floor for questions. That, that, concludes, that concludes the lesson part. Of creating a grimoire. Creating a grimoire. See you later.